everyone. Uh, my name is Roy. I'm here to talk to you about how we taught thousands of uh, CPUs how to read. We'll have uh, Uri do a section about ETLing uh, documents, and then we'll have Moshe doing the NLP uh, session. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to uh, talk about what's, what amenity analytics the company we work in, what, what we do and, and why we do it, and then we'll have two sections about serverless architecture. We chose to move from an old architecture in Java and, uh, and Docker into a new one in Python and, uh, and serverless, and then a little bit about NLP, and then some code examples and some live demo. Okay, so how we do the things that we do is we generally look at financial documents uh, so every company like Google or Microsoft, they'll release some earning calls and statements and uh, whenever a CEO does something like that, there's a guy on the side and they, and they uh, transcribe everything and so they release it and whatever they say, they give us hints. They give us, they give us uh, some pieces of information that we want to find and, 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 and bring to light. And so what we do is we take all those financial documents and news and whatever sources we have, we run our NLP models on them and we, and the point of all this is to get to uh, insights that are contextually interesting to our customers. And defining what interesting means is really, really not straightforward for anyone, I guess. You go to a customer and you say, hey, what are you looking for? And five different people in the same team would all say different things. I'm looking for whenever a CEO sounds like they're lying, or whenever someone says something but they're unsure, or whenever they talk about the cost price of their next cellular phone um, 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 uh, model. And so we try to look in for all of those. And this is how our legacy architecture used to look. It's uh, convoluted and it's uh, like a star thing. It was very uh, difficult to, uh, to track. And when I joined the company, we had several evolutions. But the main one was the we can do whatever we do a million times better theme. And we said, how do you do something a million times better? It's, well, it's easy. You need 100 times more data. And so now we get all the data we had. We used to get uh, about six months ago, but we get it much faster every 20 seconds or every couple of minutes. Uh, and we get m when many more uh, sources. We have about 50,000 sources of data now. Uh, we do it 100 times faster. And so whenever a, a document goes in, just, we kind of slice and dice it and do everything in, in uh, or, uh, a few seconds. And we aim to serve 100 times uh, clients. Right now, we're at about 10 times more clients than we used to be about uh, six months ago. We were at a hockey stick uh, curve. And so this is really fun for us. And our goals as developers is we want to have uh, some uh, agility in the way that we develop uh, things. We want to have simple development and deployment uh, mechanisms, flexible scaling. Uh, by moving from Docker to serverless, we pay by the millisecond, so if we, we, we spin up a Lambda function, we only pay for the you know, 100 or 200, 250 milliseconds that it runs, way better than having to pay for a ramp up of 30, 30 seconds or two minutes of a Docker container, and so we can, we, can, we can reduce costs. And now Uri will talk about the ETL process. Hello, I'm a bit shorter. So first thing you know about PyCon that uh, we probably use Python, so we moved from the Java on Docker over ECS uh, on uh, Amazon. We moved to Python using serverless on Lambda. And uh, as you remember, this was the messy uh, legacy architecture. And we moved to this arch architecture. As you can see, instead of a lot of services, we just use mainly five of, of them. And we invest a lot of effort to pick their names. As you see, uh, the first thing is Panama, which uh, is on Panama Canal, that we just get a lot of um, articles from there. We fetch the data from our provider. We use two different uh, lambdas. The first one, fetch them, and insert it into Kinesis uh, uh, Firehose, and another lambda consumes it, and insert it into S S3, then Brita, takes the documents and filter them to choose what is necessary and what we don't need. Move it to Roomba, which cleans the document and make it uh, ready for analyze. Then Freud takes the document, 
uh, parse it and extract the events that our clients want to see. And then Popeye gets the extractions and, and the saves it in a way that our clients can consume it through REST API. The major thing we use here is an, archi is an architectural uh, pattern that you can see, an, SQL, an SNS and SQS. Each of our components uh, output their, their uh, results into SNS, which is a PubSub, which is a PubSub that anyone that wants this output can register into it and get the result. And each component has its input into SQS that they can consume from it. And it can be, uh, it, it serves two major things. First of all, it is, each service is uh, independent and only uh, has its own component and no one else can change it. So uh, if Brita, for example, has its own SQS and SNS, only this component can change it. And the new, the another thing that is important here, that if a developer wants to uh, get the data from another uh, environment, he just connect its SQS to the other uh, environment SNS and gets the, uh, the input without changing the environment at all without changing the environment at all. So how do we work with this architecture? First of all, each developer has its own account on AWS. As you see, for example, me, Moshe, and Rui. Uh, he developed there, uh, publish ov over there, and it is isolated. It doesn't affect any other account. And then when he's ready and his code works, he creates a pull request in GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever. And when we finish and uh, they, the guys in the company approves it after a lot of conversation, then it can merge it into uh, our master branch. And then we have another account called Ops, which builds the environment, run our unit test, integration test, Lambda test. And then when it's all ready, build an artifact and then deploy it to dev environment first run the, uh, of, of course it does it with assumes role, he assumes the dev account uh, credentials, deploy the artifacts to dev account, run the, the test over there, if it works, he moves to the staging environment and then to production, and then each pull request that we open, just move through dev stage and gets to production. Two major things we need to, we have, we have encountered uh, during uh, this new architecture is log shipment and trace shipment. Uh, Lambda, as you know, uh, output its logs and tracing into CloudWatch and it's very hard to uh, maintain and search there. So we had to export it to somewhere that we can be more easy for us to handle. So we used the subscription filter that we get from AWS and created our own uh, service called Conduit, which takes all of our uh, logs and tracing from all of our accounts, insert it into Firehose Kinesis, into S3, and then the same architectural pattern that you see before, we use SNS and SQS in order to use, to, to get all these logs and tracing and write it to, uh, to the appropriate place, which is Logs.io or Honeycomb.io. This is our snippet from our cloud formation. Uh, you can see here we add, we add a resource to get events. Uh, our our method is get events. We call it get events log shipper. We add a type of subscription filter, and we have no filter because we want to move all of our logs and tracing into one place. So we use conduit ARN, which is the firehose ARN. And all of our tracing is going there, and we get it in one place, and it's very easy to use. Another thing we wanted to, use, we wanted to solve is the Lambda timeout. If our Lambda does a lot of HTTP requests, and they finished in the period the Lambda leaves, it's okay. But what happens if one of our HTTP goes beyond the lifetime of, the, of our Lambda? all of our logs and all of our tracing are just gone. We wanted to uh, prevent it and implement a solution for that. 
So what we did, we used the, the method called get remaining time in milliseconds that AWS provide us, as you can see in line two. Then we can calculate how much time does left for our Lambda to finish, and then we can ensure that we have a much time to uh, run our Lambda without failing. As you can see, we uh, check that our remaining time is more than one second, then we take another second just to make sure that we're still okay, and then we run our Lambda. So that's for now, and now Moshe is going to talk about our NLP engine. Hi everyone, thanks you for joining. Hey, I'm Moshe, uh, after we saw the ETL process that we presented, I will uh, present how we shift the architecture in uh, NLP core engine. So Amenity is an engine based on a clean NLP as the main core NLP language is feature structure. We, we build our uh, algorithms on top of that as uh, manually and semi-automatically linguistic patterns that our professional services team writes. And I will present here the flow of the engine. The purple ones are tasks that are performed by CleanLP and the blue ones are performed by us. So basically when a new document comes in, it can come in a form in PDF, Word, XML, whatever, we clean it uh, in different ways. And then it, uh, we split into sentences by uh, some algorithm. Then we perform CleanLP that gives us a tokenization, lemmatizer, SRL, um, NER, name to the cognition. For, uh, for you that uh, that not familiar with that, it's a label for uh, nouns like uh, persons, organization, dates, dates, and etc. The part of speech, like if it's a noun, verb, or uh, adjective, for example. Then we perform the graph pattern algorithms to find the the extraction, the events that are uh, interesting uh, the clients. We perform sentiment composition, named the resolution. Uh, for example, uh, if I have the sentence, uh, I saw the game yesterday, it was really nice. So the game and it perform like uh, the, the resolution to the same, um, the same thing, the same entity. Uh, we perform entity relevant detection. Uh, we have some machine learning algorithm, specifically SVM, to uh, classify the event type and some port processing uh, into JSON or XML. Uh, so basically, in the new architecture, we replace those uh, those parts. And as we all know, the first rule of programming: we don't talk about programming. Uh, uh, no, but seriously, first rule of programming: if it works, don't touch it. We all know it very very well, and we have a really good engine that works. Uh, and performs a thousand, ten thousand of articles a day, and it serves the clients and gives us good results. So, why should we replace the main algorithm with the company, uh, which is very risky? And I will explain the reason now. First of all, it's based on ClearNLP. ClearNLP, when Amenity founded, was one of the leader a toolkit for NLP, open source. It's based on Java, uh, but it's written in some academic style and not production ready. Uh, it's, it, it's not so fast uh, compared to other toolkits today. Uh, all the algorithms were uh, improved uh, in the last recent years, as we know, for neural networks, like the part of speech, and you vectorizing and things like that. And second, the way we work today, it's uh, loading the, all the linguistic patterns that we will see later into a graph, graph data structure inside the memory, which costs us a lot of time to load model and a lot of RAM be, because a, a model that serves the client can be consist of thousands of, uh, of linguistic patterns. And inside the RAM, each one of them, it's a graph data structure basically. So we change the way we work. And the third one, because it takes a lot of RAM, it resides inside Docker and it runs into, inside ECS and it, it makes the, the, uh, the DevOps team and all the ICD, CICD the process very hard. So we change the core component into Spacey. Uh, I guess that a lot of you are familiar with Spacey, that, uh, the guys that works with NLP. It's open source, it's based on Cyton, so it's very, very fast. We wrote the code in Python and Cyton. 
And, and we now change the way that we worked uh, to find linguistic patterns, to find events. In, instead of holding graphs inside memory, we just generate C code, low-level code, from the, from the patterns that represent the actual pattern. We will see some example later. And because it, now it, it, we don't need a lot of RAM, it's just basically loading code, compile code, so we can run it on Lambda, and we split the task into smaller tasks uh, to make the, the process faster and better. And as a bonus, we have, a, we have the core algorithm written in Python, uh, and it's a Python conference, so it's better. And for example, the linguistic, uh, this is an example for linguistic pattern. The blue, the blue line is the original sentence that uh, that the professional services wrote the, 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 the pattern on. We can see here a proposition for acquisition. The green one are the nodes that, that composite the, the pattern. Uh, they have some, um, some features that they can use, some properties, some connections between the nodes. Uh, they don't write it manually. We developed from them some IDE style uh, platform. And the purple one is the action that should be performed when we match the rule. In this case, this is a merge and acquisition announcement. And we will see an example how the generated code looks like for the fourth node, uh, which means we search for an air tag organization. And the part of speech, it's a singular noun. We, and this is the generated code. This was generated automatically. It's a Python code that generates C code. We can see the first if there that checks for the uh, NER tag that uh, it's org, organization. And uh, the second if, it's the part of speech, single unknown. Uh, this was generated automatically. And then we compile this uh, C code into shared object, SO file, that we can load later and perform the tasks. This, for example, a snippet from uh, the execution code. It's Cyton. We iterate the document, token by token, and search for potential patterns that should be run on it. We have some optimization algorithms to, to, to know uh, what linguistic patterns should be run, and not all of them. And then in re reflection, we, we execute the function. So a little bit about the architecture. The, the below one, it's, the, uh, it's when the professional services finish the writing the model. We generate C code from that. We compile it with GCC into SO file, load it to S3, and then it, it's available for everyone else to load the model and run it on a document. And that's the above part, that we get the document, we pass it with Spacey and the SRL. And I, I drill down into generic processing, so we get a, a task through SQS that triggers the Lambda. Then the Lambda decides if it should be split into smaller tasks. For example, we get a document, we split into paragraph. Each paragraph, it's a small task by its own. And, and, and then we, 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 we join the results, like a MapReduce architecture using DynamoDB, to, to split the, the task. And, and later on, when the task completes, we, we publish the result to SNS and S3. So we'll see a small live demo. I have, here, I have here a document, it's an article transcript that the company released, uh, should be released in uh, every quarter. And it's not long, it's like 200 and something uh, uh, sentences. And I have a compiled mo module of uh, 2,000 rules, which is a lot. And we can see here that loading the model, it's on 252 milliseconds. Now I run it with space in the SRL, uh, which now is the bottleneck. And running all the rules takes a little bit than 100 milliseconds, which is really, really fast, because it's just a compiled C code. So takeouts from the presentation, uh, we used Cyton as like the pre-processing and execution uh, code, makes the things really fast. We use compile code instead of holding objects into memory. And both, and we split the tasks in a MapReduce style that can be run in thousands of Lambda parallel. All of that gave us significant uh, milestone in uh, 
our, way, our path to achieve the goal of one billion documents in less than an hour. Thank you, everyone.